Good morning, uh, my name is uh, Philip Wilson, I'm from Essex County Council and today we're at Chigborough Fisheries where we are having our Angling for Success event where um, as part of the Art of the Possible Festival 2017 we've got six uh, young people from Little Haven's Hospice, a great hospice that looks after children uh, who suffer from cancer or have some uh, life-changing illness and also six uh, chaps from the military all of whom are uh, suffering from some form of post-traumatic stress disorder. And the idea of today is to give them, but all of them, a little bit of respite, a little bit of a, a day off, and a day to learn how to fish. And here we are at Chigra on what is going to be, a, hopefully, a fantastic day. <laughs> this is Adam Rayner with Mr Nick Watkins, having failed misery to try and amuse him for the opening of our shot here. Um, we're at Chigborough today, we've just had a fabulous introduction from the uh, chap from Essex County Council, but Nick is half of the team, along with uh, Anna Santoro, who've organised um, this event today. So tell us exactly what's going on here at Chigborough today. Hello Adam. Um, what we've got today is uh, we're working in hand with Essex County Council on an event called Art of the Possible, which uh -huh. has been running for the last two years. This is year three. Uh, and it's about some of the great things that are going on within the county. Uh, so what we're doing today is we have a group of youngsters from um, Little Havens Hospice. These are kids who could be either seriously ill or it's um, some of their family who are struggling to deal with the situation that they're in. So we take them out and we do a bit of fishing with them and, and, and give them a little bit of respite. We've also got people from um, uh, uh, ex-forces veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress. Angling has proved to be a wonderful source of relaxation and to help them deal with their issues and uh, we have a team from Essex County Council as well so what we're doing a little bit of coaching with them helping them out and then we're going to run a little match and have lots of cheating and lots of messing about. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds brilliant we'll find out more about it as the day goes on but there's uh, what we're doing here at this uh, fabulous fishery they have trout fishing as well as of course. Nick thanks ever so much. You're welcome. No worries. <laughs> yes, Adam Rayner, take two with Cliff from uh, his Crafty Catcher Baits. Now, um, I gather you get involved with uh, more than one good cause as such, and, and you generally do, well, you're kind of munificent by giving people bait for charity events, Cliff. Well, we do. We try and make um, some contribution along those lines. Uh, the angling trade over the last sort of 10, 15 years, from a trade perspective, has definitely been shrinking. Um, there seem to be less youngsters coming into fishing, so anything that we can do to help that and get people involved, um, as you rightly said earlier, you can strike that match on people's enthusiasm and get them to go fishing and keep going. That's good for all of us. Looking for ignition of a lifelong passion. Cliff, thanks ever so much, and good on you for, uh, well, I saw the pile of product. That was way more than just enough for them. That, that's enough for them to take stuff home and have another go later on, isn't it? Indeed, Deliberately. absolutely. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Just lift him up, I'll take the net away. That's, That's mint, that fish. Nice, that, isn't it? Yeah, if you spin, spin him round there. So, who have we got here for the benefit of the um, viewers, guys? Well, we have Jordan here who has just banked this stunning mirror carp nice. uh, on, a, on a little multi rig which okay. we just chucked on the other side of the weed. It got itself buried in there, but she uh, gave it a bit of beef and out it came. Very nice fish. What a beauty. And close on in there. That's a feisty looking fish with the erect fin going, I have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just focused on the fish. Just got a shot of you smiling, looking happy there too. Nice son. So, what's your estimate on the way to that? About eight? Well, about, about 40 pounds, I reckon. <laughs> been on the diet, it though. Like, it just looks small next to me. Yeah, it's been dieting. No, no it was. Uh, probably about six, seven pounds, I reckon. Yes. Lovely. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> the first of hopefully very many. Geezer. So, uh, as um, you know, from the coach's point of view, I think you're happier about this than actually your angler here, aren't you? Well, yeah, I, th I think so. <laughs> I'm getting a bit, bit too animated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your uh, your angler's being kind of cool and laid back, but it's. I think that whole thing about the uh, coaches not being competitive. Who was it who gave the derisory snort? Was that you? No, no, no. no Somebody was. Me. Whoever it was, it's like, yep. And you're now in the lead. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, we've got a carp here, yeah. <laughs> First one, I think. Yeah, man. Right, let's put him back. Hopefully we'll get another one there. Yeah. What's the name of this lake? Uh, Chigborough Fisheries. 
Oh no, we're not cheaper fishers. I mean, we're particularly like this is. Oh, these there's are a, just stock ponds. There's a map um, on the f uh, where the car park is on yes. the cabin. There's yeah. a sort of diagram. It's got all the. Uh, yeah, I was just expecting you guys to be like complete experts and go. Oh, of course, this is an HHAC club water, and we're having license just for the oh, data. And that as well. I thought you were going to yeah. give it all that. You know what I mean? Rather than. <laughs> Put that there's, in a, there's a map by the door, fat boy. Yeah, <laughs> it's a club water that doesn't get looked after, hence all the weed right now. Oh dear. Weed raking earlier, well, complaining about the club water not getting properly looked after. Yes, clubs can sometimes have issues with typical volunteer work. Typical car fisher, fisher woman. Yes. Just, uh, just saw um, water and I put my rod in. <laughs> <laughs> that's typical, isn't it, of car fishing? Oh, oh, that's not that swan. Oh! oh. That's, you've got a tiny tab there. Yeah. Wouldn't want it that long next to the hook, but uh, fine. Fair enough. All right. I'll tell you what you're doing. The line goes through. I'm going to leave you through the eye of the hook, say. Yeah, so you've got the two bits together. What you do is you tag in, long tag in, and go around into a loop, and you put back in, so you end up with the line coming down through the loop, and you go around the line through the loop five times. So the line comes back up towards you, yeah, okay. and they maintain a huge amount of space. Like that, tie one up and show you a bit. Okay. Um, and really, really, really strong lines. Um, other things I use a lot of are things like um, uh, uh, Albright, that's the main thing I get into the car, weeks and all that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm afraid I had to paparazzi the lady. Anderson, sorry, the other half of the organising team at today's event, has to be said. I think she's just going around and making sure everyone's, uh, well, we know who's here on that uh, list of people on site thing you need. Well, the other type, these ones, they're just a little bit more awkward to use. With those, they're just simple. As long as the line's tight, bang, it's out every time. Well, I don't know if the hook's a little bit close to the front, so it, it, it does appear to be, but that, you're really, really struggling to pick them up. So that one's a little bit close. And we know that we've cleared as much as we can. 
think you'll go far, Nick. It was like literally 10 to 12, I'm thinking, what? That's the floor. It has, yeah. hasn't it? But then doesn't it just when you're fishing, though? To be honest, it does go. What's your... Mm -hmm. Hello, baby! Oh, I can hear you now. Oh! She's only doing what comes natural. Oh, look at those eyes. <laughs> Feed me. Honey. Oh, Nick. No, it's not funny. Why is she kept starving all the time, she said? It's not funny. No, it's not funny. Please don't. <laughs> this really is uh, an idyllic spot right now. Um, well, uh, my mate Nick reckons that that is uh, likeliest to be a bream or two stuff in their faces. And today, well, um, uh, we've got uh, two different, very disparate groups of anglers here being. Uh, shown the, uh, the ropes and how this stuff all works. We've got one lot of guys from uh, the forces and a bunch of youngsters who are, uh, well, there's either uh, somebody in their life who's got a terminal prognosis or someone who's horribly unwell. There's an awful lot to deal with. Um, point being that angling is one heck of a distraction. You're doing really good work and in recognition of that, well, Nick, you did go um, absolutely shamelessly on the swag for both bait and tackle, didn't you? So, oh, God, yes. Yes. Uh, do these folks all know that they're going to get um, some freebies at the end of the day? Uh, no. They don't. Um, oh, no. so it's delicious. I, 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 I kept that nice and quiet, the idea being that they came along just for the experience today. And then you um, get a, and now learn. you can carry on. And um, then they're going to get a bit of a surprise at the end of the day because I've got a load, load of freebies to give them. Okay, just show us the freebies. Let's have a look at what you've got down here. Let's uh, First off... Um, Start off with the reels? Yeah, by all means. I received these this morning, um, sent by Express uh, Courier. Pure fishing have been fantastic and sent us a load of reels. Really nice. Um, yeah. Shakespeare reels. We'll just put that to one side. Shakespeare Omni. Is that three bearings? Uh, it is indeed, sir. Yes, so uh, although uh, entry level, it's telling you how many it's got way upstream from the uh, nasty cheapies you see in the uh, some of the trade shows, tackle shows, I should say. Let's get the oh, spare spool. Because ruggedness testing the spare spool there. Yes, <laughs> ruggedness has to be tested. The new, new Omnis, which actually I think are a lovely looking little reel. That is rather smart, isn't it? Yeah, and they've sent us 12, um, 18 of these. Oh, respect. No, oh, sorry, twelve. I, I, also I can't, saw I can't count. <laughs> Baker says. Also saw a bunch of rods in their in their shiny packages. There, if we can tuck that carefully back in the box. You've got some. Um, oh, it's all right. Shakespeare. <laughs> sorry, no harm done. Some Shakespeare uh, Shakespeare rods as well in these packs here. We have yes. Uh, they sent us um, float rods, feeder rods, and and some some, some whip kits. Show, show us. The, is that the feeder rod pack you got there? This is the float rod. Uh huh. Uh, twelve foot. Um, the uh, part of the new, new uh, sorry 11 foot part of the new Omni range uh -huh. um, and these for um, what's classed as a kind of starter market it's actually a really nice piece of kit it's got a lovely lovely action Ooh, don't uh, camera, rated up, up to six pound line strength uh -huh. um, and they're really really nice nice piece of kit then we've got open this one so let's look at the bits inside here this is the feeder rod which has got multiple tips. Let's take it out. Let's have a look at that multiple tip here. That's the key, isn't it? Excuse me while I tip this up to get it out. Thank you, thank you. So three piece? Uh, three piece plus the um, uh, tips. So uh, a baggie and five different little bits. So you have of, uh, four different bits of whipped up carbon. A, a box with a lightweight tip and a heavyweight tip. Uh -huh. And then we have a three piece rod. Oh, oh man, this is, uh, this is some serious kit. So, uh, yeah, Pure Fishing went, went out of their way to actually get all this couriered to me first thing this morning uh -huh. um, uh, to actually have it delivered to the venue. Good lad. Which I thought was absolutely superb. It is. Tell us about this bait because uh, you've got different flavours from Mad Baits, haven't you? Show us this, these buckets as well because there is a. Mad Baits have, yeah, they've gone. 
they've, they've, uh, they've really done well. We've got these 18 two and a half litre buckets, uh -huh. um, and each one has a variety of bait in it. What they've done is we have um, some are uh, using Nuts Plus, some are using Pandemic, some have got CTS Plus. Um, and uh, what they've done, we've got a bag of boilies. Uh -huh. That's a Nuts Plus bag of boilies. It here. is indeed, sir. Got a great smell as well. Uh, which great is a stencho vision, but it isn't. Let's fill up that camera lens. Come on, camera, you can focus on this. You don't. It's difficult to see in this light. Oh, yes. Then we have. We have some wafters, That's some nice critically balanced baits. Wafters. Yep. Okay. Critically balanced as we used to call them in the day. Yes. Wafters as they like to call them now. Uh -huh. Just drop that down there for a moment. Then we have a bag of stick mix, all, all uh, the same flavour to go with, with what they've got. Lovely. And then they have a booster spray uh -huh. for the hook baits. This is a legendary material, Robin Red, isn't it? Oh yes, they have a license with Haith's to do liquid Robin Red, uh -huh. which they developed and I've been using to fantastic success. Haith's being the uh, birdseed people who legendarily devised this stuff. Oh yes. Everyone wrote that. And then to go with all that, we have a Honest load of pellets. Honest to goodness, pellets. Um, so we've got those. Yes. So you've got a nice, a nice little pack, uh, half kilo boilies, yes. some wafters, uh, booster spray, pellets, so people can just Go and fish. And Very in the easy. meanwhile, there's um, there's another bait company with a massive great pile of stuff on the table. We're going to have a little look at too, because there was uh, uh, crafty catch, crafty catches as well. Yes, they've, so, yes, they've yeah. supplied most of the bait for today. Yeah, ground baits, pellets, boilies, um, and uh, sweet corn, and I can't even think what else they've provided. Loads of stuff. Yes, which is far, cool. far, far more than we can actually use today. Exactly the solid knowledge which I accused him of right in the intro earlier making sure that hopefully the converted will get ignited to want to go fish <laughs> and take his baits with. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So, but yeah, uh, uh, absolutely astounding today. Great news. Good stuff. Thank you very much. All right. That's a rather tasty looking uh, jar of squishy pellets from the Van Den End brand. Um, uh, donated by the chap known as Cliff, who, um, well, this is all the uh, Cop Dock Mill baits, which... Uh, Crafty catcher. Yeah. Crafty catcher. What's the Cop Dock Mill connection then? Is that, uh, does he design them all? Or? They're actually based at Cop Dock Mill and Cop Dock supply them with all the ingredients they need to make all the bait. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And then so, they so. actually are the bait make inside of it. I understand now, I understand. And right there isn't just ordinary sweet corn, that's infused with krill oil. It is indeed. It's a fishy sweet corn, that wouldn't be very nice to have on. Krill, yeah. krill protein, I, I don't want that on my toast. <laughs> but the carp says, they loves it. Um, allegedly, allegedly. Yes. <laughs> this is a man being very politically correct. And in the meanwhile, of course, there's such a plethora of stuff here that this is enough for the guys who get to take away those uh, Shakespeare reels and rods to have some serious amounts of bait for uh, when they go out themselves, yes? Yes, indeed. Yeah, they've got a mixture of boilies and pellets there and the, uh, squidgy pellets and ground bait down there as well. Ooh, down by your feet, sir. Yeah, just uh, zooming down here. Where's the ground bait? Around. Oh yes, so it is. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Good on you, Cliff. You're a star. He's, he's a fantastic bloke for doing that. So, gentlemen, introduce yourselves for the uh, for the camera for us. Okay. Well, I'm uh, Nick Cooper. I'm a senior lecturer at uh, University of Essex. Clutching a fishing rod there. And uh, I'm Mark Wheeler. I'm also at uh, University of Essex part time and part time working within the NHS. So, um, what do you? Uh, what, what is it that you're, you're doing at, uh, at at Essex? There's uh, a study involving angling and and its efficacy towards help with uh, people suffering from PTSD. Yeah, correct. I mean, we've been working five years, four, four or five years, uh, four or five years, four or five yeah. years now, um, working on looking at the positive effects of taking groups of military veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder uh, out fishing, taking them fishing um, in little groups, two day trips, one night, and um, we've been looking at the effects on post-traumatic stress and other mental disorders. But as against um, people just going, oh yeah, it's really good, isn't it? you are actually properly scientifically quantifying this in stuff that might be repeatable in other places as in real material science. Yeah, I mean, that's the general idea. So we're doing some, some proper measures before and after for each of the studies that we do, and then we can compare 
all the different types of studies and all the different types of uh, measures that we use. So we've been doing some sort of basic questionnaires of well-being and mental health, but also trying to do some computerised tasks as well. So we're looking at how people's attentional biases might be changed by coming fishing, for example. Wow, that's... Uh this man just said, attentional biases in a fishing video. <laughs> <laughs> um, attentional biases, so would that be to do with one's ability to continue to concentrate on, on certain other jobs versus generally having your mind continuously wandering off, or, or is that a I bad definition? It's, it's not a bad de definition, but there's a bit not more to bias. it as well, I think. So yes. that in terms of the attentional People. bias, there's, there's a tendency towards a bias towards negative stimuli within the environment. Ah. And for also for kind of hyper scanning of the environment, so continually looking around for threats, and yes. so we're, we're trying to pick up on that at all and seeing whether that's actually reduced once you've gone on, say, two days fishing. Yes, there's something which um, I've seen referred to as watchfulness. Yeah, which is yeah. Um, I've I've been out and about and you just see people who are feeling kind of threatened all the time, whereas. When you've got a kind of watchful about one thing which you're ignoring, you've got a heck of a bite going oh, on there, by oh, the way. Oh, Chad, <laughs> I was going to just close oh, up. Oh, a little, oh, no, sign no, no, little no. thing. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the curse of the Adam Rayner camera. <laughs> the fact that it's running at all means that while you are filming, while I am filming, you are royally stuffed. Yeah. And there is no way on the earth that you're going to ever catch a fish. I'm just well, twiddling I'm, my magical polarizer and zooming in there. I'm going to prove you wrong then. On this gentleman's yeah, float. Prove you wrong, Nick. Have you got any of that ground? Yep. So yes, these are seriously, um, oop, seriously snaggy waters, of course. Yeah. There's a whole load of uh, natural food in here, as well as lots and lots of weed. But it has to be said, the uh, the fishing here at Chigbra is absolutely fabulous. I do love a uh, slightly overgrown lake, actually. And, uh, yeah. There's fabulous amounts of natural food in here, and I gather the few little carp that have just been put in the stock ponds have done voracious growth rates. And yeah. Yes, there's some great fish been caught, but. Uh, <laughs> Gentlemen, it's a privilege to meet you. Thank you so Thank much. You. It's just lovely to see that fishing is being recognised and studied by proper grown-up scientists, because I'm accusing you of that. <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jack. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, you're on. Oh, are, oh you need to call for the camera, they're, Spence. They're Float watching at Chigborough. Oh, hello. They ain't got a quite hard one, don't they? They're all feeding. They all pull up. Okay. Oh, it's where on the camera. It's a left of a bath, yeah? Oh, it's your birthday, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's your birthday, isn't it? That was a lovely tension out of this swim earlier today. Oh, with the world, Jolith. We also focus, having little problems focusing on these floats here, just wibbling in and out a bit. Quiet. Yeah, doesn't it? Lovely tench out of this swim earlier. Here the guys in the other swim. There's a bit of a commotion, they've got a bit of a fish. This is Alison Mullins, who is uh, a crucial cog, I would say, at the, uh, was it say, the, uh, the Havens Hospice Organisation. And you're part of the Little Havens part of it, which looks after the youngsters. I am. I also work across both sites, but uh, I'm the youth and sibling support worker. Gotcha. And, and just oh. so that my viewers have got some sort of grasp of what hospices do, are we talking about palliative care for folks with a terminal diagnosis, I take it? Um, for the children, um, <coughs> they are not expected, the children we look after are not expected to survive beyond their 19th birthday, but That's... many do. That's what they call limited life, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, so that's important work you're doing, and I guess that there's uh, huge stresses involved for these youngsters as well in different directions, but every bit as deep-seated as there are for these damaged uh, squaddies we've got also getting involved in fishing. Um, and, and how did you actually get involved in uh, taking these uh, these youngsters out angling? Because I gather this is the, the second go, and obviously if you're doing it more than once, it must be working. It is. Um, somebody called Nick got in touch with us yes. um, asking if we would be interested and we said we had children's groups, especially our in-betweeners group, which are an all-boys group. Um, and they're aged 11 upwards and we said we were sure they'd like to try it. Well, they, they, they certainly look like they're having fun over there as well. They're, uh, I have to tell you, the uh, all the 
professional angling coaches are taking this very seriously. And I was over there with the squaddy lads when there was a bit of a commotion and something got caught over here. And they were all like, go on, I was getting a bit, that was a bit <laughs> proper bothered. So uh, I think your in between us lads are about to uh, stripe these here uh, X Forces dudes in the match that's going on right now in a, a kind of a gentle kind of a way, but it's, it's a brilliant thing. It's a brilliant thing. So um, I take it this is something that you think that Little Havens uh, will be carrying on with? Well, I hope so, yes. It would be nice if we could do a couple of fishing days each year. would be nice. Yes, I know that uh, Nick and Anna will be only too pleased to help because they're stars like that. Alison, thank you so, so much. It's lovely to see what is either a, a passion or a pastime actually ending up being a real genuine power for good here in more than one direction. Thank you. Thank you. Sausages, and not any old sausages. Those are, um, well, uh, the technical term is vertically integrated, meaning uh, an industry or a business that does everything pretty much in-house. Um, and we're not talking about winding the wire of a loudspeaker. We're talking about prime pork and apple sausages. And we're also talking about pork and apple burgers. I've got <laughs> Nick laughing his butt off next to me here because he can hear the fat man really meaning it when he's like oh is it the food but i have to tell you these um wicks manor is a bit special the howie family farmed wicks manor in the beautiful essex countryside for 50 years says they're on every pack our pigs live in open fresh strawed barns in a stress-free environment and fed crops grown and milled on the farm so he can confidently tell you what's in your meat wicks manor born and bred farmed and fed i can't wait <laughs> yeah We'll work around it. We'll work around it. There's plenty more. I think you need to be quite careful about how many put on for this. You haven't had PTSD, guys, yet, don't forget. Oh, true, true. <laughs> Do bear that in mind. No, they, they, really this is a polite lot. <laughs> <laughs> we've had, we've had our burgers. We've had our Right. Guys, I've got a question for you. Now you're at the uh, sausage and burger stage. Were you into the fishing? Was it cool? Yeah. Do you reckon you've beaten these these uh, these vet types? No. Well, I'm catch a great big heavy fish. Yes. Jesus. So is this the first time you fished? Yeah. Do you think you'd uh, do it again if you had like the chance? Excellent. That's so cool. That might be the most important bit of the entire vid. Because all these people care about is fishing carrying on, really. And unless young people, and geezers in particular, because it is mostly geezers in England. Although in England, in America, it's nearly 50-50, uh, girls and boys, you know. But here in the UK, it's mostly geezers. I'm talking blithering anyway. <laughs> That's good news. Glad you had a good time, guys.